السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the general anatomy lectures I'm gonna cover in this presentation The functional anatomy of the respiratory system I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt For the respiratory system, it is what we use to breathe It can be divided into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose and the pharynx or the throat, while the lower respiratory tract includes the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, and the lungs. This is the anatomical classification of the respiratory system. The lungs contain alveoli or terminal air sacs. The respiratory zone is where the gas exchange takes place at the walls of these alveoli, while the conducting zone includes the rest of the respiratory system where it can act only as a passage to conduct the air to the lungs. This is the functional classification of the respiratory system. In addition to conducting the air to the respiratory zone, they purify, humidify, and warm the air. The upper respiratory tract includes the external nose, which is the only visible part of the respiratory system. Air passes uh, through the external nose through two openings, we call them the nostrils. And the external nose consists of cartilage and bones. The nostrils lead inside to the nasal cavity, and this cavity or space lies inside the skull. It is separated by the nasal septum into two cavities and if we ask ourselves what is the function of the nose you can simply think of the days when you have a very bad cold so the nose acts as a passageway for air it also cleanses the air since it is lined by mucous membrane which is creates mucus in which foreign particle adheres to also, this mucous membrane contains a tiny hairs called cilia, which move the mucus backwards to the throat where it is swallowed. If we enlarge it, so this is the mucous membrane that lines the nose, and these are the cilia that peeks into one direction to move the mucus backwards. Some of these tiny hairs are large enough to form visible hair that traps the air dust and large particles. The nose also humidifies and warms uh, the air. Since the lateral wall of the nasal cavity has three elevations or pony projections, we call them conchi. We have the superior, middle, and inferior nasal conchi. They are also covered by mucous membrane that is rich in blood vessels that warms the air and also secretes mucus that humidifies the dried air. The other function of the nose is smell sensation, of course. Only the mucous membrane that lies at uh, the upper part of the nasal cavity contains the olfactory receptors or smell receptors for detection of smell sensation. So if we enlarge this area, we can see here for example, this is the chemical substance that will dissolve into the mucous membrane of the nose, stimulate the olfactory receptors, and the nerve impulse will be transmitted into the olfactory nerve at the base of the brain. And then the impulse will be transmitted to the specific center at the cerebral cortex where the brain can differentiate between the different types of smells. Around the nose, there are paranasal sinuses. They are hollow areas uh, of the skull bones that have openings into the nasal cavity. They are lined with a mucous membrane like that of the nose, so they help in warming and humidifying the air as well. And since they are hollow spaces in the skull, they help in making the skull lighter and also the voice more resonating. The second part of the upper respiratory tract is the pharynx 
and I already mentioned it in the digestive system video. So the pharynx acts as a common passage for both the respiratory system and the digestive system. It has three regions. So we have the nasopharynx, which lies behind the nasal cavity, the oropharynx, which lies behind the oral cavity, and the laryngopharynx, which lies behind the larynx. Now we talk about the lower respiratory tract. We start with the larynx. It's a firm part that's filled in front of the neck. It sits above the trachea. It's formed of cartilages and membranes and contains two vocal cords, which when vibrate produce sounds. The epiglottis, as you can see, it is part of the larynx and acts as a flap that keeps the food from getting into the air passage. So when you swallow, the epiglottis moves backward and closes the opening of the larynx and prevent the food from getting into your lower respiratory tract. Then we have the trachea. It starts from the larynx and travels through the upper part of the thorax and then ends at the level of the disc that lies between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebrae. It's about 10 to 12 centimeters in length and divides at this level that I have already mentioned into two primary bronchi. Each one enters its corresponding lung. The place of its bifurcation or splitting, we call it the carina. It lies against the esophagus or in front of the esophagus, and it is always kept open since its wall is made by a C-shaped rings made of cartilage. If we take a cross-section in them, so this is the C-shaped ring uh, cartilage to keep the trachea always open. Its posterior wall is closed by a muscle and connective tissue, allowing the esophagus to distend during swallowing. Inside, it is lined by ciliated mucosa that helps to keep the respiratory system clean from any foreign particles. Then we have the bronchial tree, but this tree is held upside down. The bronchi get smaller and smaller to form what's called bronchioles. The bronchioles also get smaller and smaller to form what's called terminal bronchioles. And the terminal bronchioles give what's called the respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles terminate into what's called alveolar ducts and sacs. And these are the respiratory exchange chambers. And as you can see here, the wall of the respiratory exchange chambers are rich in blood supply. If we enlarge it like this, The right lung made of three loops, upper loop, middle loop, and lower loops, separated from each other by two fissures, the oblique fissure and horizontal fissure, while the left lung is made only of two loops, upper loop and lower loop. They are separated from each other by an oblique fissure. The left lung is characterized by presence of a discontinuation of its anterior border. It's called the cardiac notch. Below it, there is a small extension called the lingula. The lungs lie within the chest in the pleural cavities. Each lung has an apex that extends up to the neck, a base which rests on the diaphragm, mediastinal surface that faces the heart and the viscera of the neck and costal surface that faces the ribs. The lung root is where the structures get into or leave the lungs. So we have the bronchus and the vessels enter each lung at the hilum. We have the primary bronchus. Two pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood from each lung to the heart and one pulmonary artery 
that carries the deoxygenated blood to each lung, and also some nerves and lymph vessels. This is the lung hilum where the structures get into or leave the lung. You can see the bronchus at the most posterior end of the hilum. At the most anterior end, you can see the superior and the inferior pulmonary veins. In the middle, you can see the pulmonary artery. The pleural cavities are two in number, one on the right side of the chest and one on the left side of the chest. Each contains uh, its corresponding lung. It is made of a double layer of serous membrane. And in this simple diagram, you can see how the lungs grow inside uh, these cavities, pressing it into double layers. The outer layer is called the parietal layer, which lines the chest wall, the diaphragm, and covers the chest viscera. And inner layer, it's called the visceral layer, which surrounds each lung completely, and also surrounds the root of the lung. The pleural cavity is the space between the parietal layer and the visceral layer of the pleura. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.